say a very pleasant good evening yes he said I am terror so glory to God yet still he made the river he made the sea giving praise to Almighty God the keeper of our life the healer of our life tonight we welcome each and every one to light of revelation radio broadcast it is such a privilege and an honor to have each and every one around the world remember we're streaming around the world it's www.lorradio.com please we ask you to invite to share with your friends the information let us console each other with the word of God with the love of God the blessing of God tonight I'll be speaking on the topic the process of being made free. Yes, the process of being made free in the mighty name of Jesus. So I want to say good evening to all the people on Facebook and around the world. For those who are listening on the apps, glory to God, hallelujah, hallelujah. The process, yes, the process. Yes, we're going to deal with the process of being um, made free. The process. There is a 
process one have to go through the process of of being made free we praise God uh, we praise God this evening for his goodness glory to God for freedom in Christ Jesus freedom yes it it um our team will be freedom in Christ Jesus hallelujah yes he said hallelujah we give him praise we give him praise we give God praise oh glory to God hallelujah let me get my Bible and um, precious people of God the first scripture we are going to read tonight we are going to look at is second Corinthians chapter 3 second Corinthians chapter 3 speaking about the freedom from bondage whatever situation that you are in circumstances that you are in glory to God I bring you freedom freedom in Christ Jesus freedom from the restriction glory to God yes second Corinthians chapter 3 we are gonna deal with tonight glory to God hallelujah second Corinthians chapter 3 glory to God let me just type this in second Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 17 to 18 this is where my um, thing will be taken from my team will be second Corinthians chapter 3 oh we made a mistake here I made a mistake let me see um, please please forgive me I made a mistake yes let me um, go back and um, and do this second Corinthians second Corinthians uh, 3 glory to God 17 to 18 okay now that's now that's better glory to God this is this is where I would like to be glory to God hallelujah thank you Jesus glory to God hallelujah we praise God for Jesus tonight yes second Corinthians chapter 3 the process there's a process of being made free that one need to go through that one need to face that one need to understand glory to God there's a process of being made free once again welcome to light of revelation radio we give almighty god all the praise all the glory due to them second corinthians chapter 3 from verse 17 through 18 and it said read thus now the lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom glory to God and we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory which come from the Lord who is the Spirit of God let us pray most righteous God and our heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you for the spirit that brought us freedom. Your spirit that brings liberation to mankind, O oh God. And tonight we celebrate our freedom, O oh God, in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. God, I thank you because you have come into this world 
to set us free from bondage, limitation, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. So, mighty God, may your word go forth with clarity, with wisdom, with knowledge and understanding. We ask these mercy in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, precious um, people of God, tonight, as we look into the scripture of um, 2 um, Corinthians chapter 3, the Bible declares, Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is liberation. Your freedom. Glory to God. What Christ brought us through the will of God is freedom. We were slaves in bondage to slave. Our ancestors were enslaved in bondage to sin. Glory to God. Hallelujah. They were limited in their ability or in their movement. They were limited in their resources. They were limited in power. They were limited in knowledge. Oh, glory to God. But tonight I come to tell somebody in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Take the limit off. Christ came to take the limit off you. The restriction that was set up, the impediment that was set up in your way, Christ came to remove it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. We praise God. Hallelujah. There is a price required. There's a price required for our freedom. And Christ pay the price for our freedom. Yes, Almighty God pay the price for our freedom. I want you to think about it because we want you to engage your mind, indulge your mind, saints of God, that there's a price Christ paid for our freedom. Glory to God. And saints of God, only the truth, only by the truth are we made free. Only by the word of truth are we made free. There's no other way you are free. Only by the teaching of the truth of God's word are we made free. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Glory be to God. Yes, let me say this again because I want each and every one to understand this message. Glory to God. It brings blessing. It's the anointing of Almighty God that make us free. The Spirit of God that make us free. Where the Spirit of the Almighty God is, there is freedom. And it is only by the truth are we made free. Hallelujah. Let's turn our Bible to the book of John chapter 8 verse 31 and 32. Because we're going to show you the process. There's a process. It's very clear into our understanding what Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him. We are going to read it and I pray that you indulge your mind, you engage your mind in the word of God. Because we bring you freedom, we bring you liberty, we bring you truth. Only by the truth are we made free. Glory to God. There is no other way you can be free. And many of us, we are not free. We are not free and we are going to deal with um, what bondage really means. The definition of bondage versus freedom. So because it is time for you to expand your territory your boundary god is about ever increasing it's about ever increasing the wisdom the love of almighty god oh glory to god so john chapter 8 verse 31 and 32 children true 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 believers true children of god speaking about true children of god john chapter um 8 verse 31 and it read to the jews who had believed him. Jesus said, If you hold fast to my teaching, you are really my disciple. If you hold fast to my teaching, then you are my, my disciple. Verse, verse 32. Then you will know the truth, and the truth, and the truth will set you free. The truth will will set you free saints of God. If you hold on to my teaching. So now I, I believe you need to take your time and hear what that has said. If you hold to my teaching, 
and the truth you know will what? Liberate you. So there you see, only by the truth are you made free. Good evening, Sister Florentia. Um, only by God's truth are we made free. There's no other way you can be free but by the truth. So, and we're going to show you some things tonight, how freedom, the process. Now, again, if you hold fast, and I believe the King James Version, let's get the King James Version too, because we're going to read from both um, versions of the Bible. So we see, and I would like you to indulge your mind, engage your mind in the word. I want you to think. I want you to ponder. I want you to give careful consideration to what you're reading, what you're hearing. Oh, glory to God, because you will be healed by the word of God. Faith comes through hearing and hearing the word of God and your healing will also come through the word of God. Your freedom comes by hearing the word of God, believing the word of God, putting the word of God into practice will also bring forth your freedom. Glory to God. Now let me read it from the King James Version. John chapter 8 verse um, 31 and 32. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believe on him, if you continue, I love that word now, if you continue, once it all fast, if you continue, the process, keep on going, don't stop, don't stop, keep on going. If you continue, don't stop, don't give up. Huh? If you continue in my word, keep on, keep on in the word, instruction, keep on in the word, then you are my disciple indeed. Then, if you continue in my word, no other way. He's not pointing them to no other thing, but in his word. He said, if you continue in my word, then truly you'll be his disciple. Verse 32, and he shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Speaking about the freedom. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, we're seeing evidence. So, how do I get um, to the freedom of God? I must continue in the word of God. We must continue in the word of God. Hold on to the word of God. Believe the word of God. Study the word of God. Meditate upon the word of God. When? Day and night. In spite of what may come your way, you need to hold on to the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, freedom from what? So now... Now, now you know the truth. So now I want you to focus on what is just being read. Then you will know the truth. Freedom from lies. Freedom from deception. You got to get what the word of God is pointing you to. So God is saying, if you want to be free, what is you going to be free? Free from the false teaching. Free from the deception, the lies that has been um, propagating short century from generation to generation so now so we're going to find out what bring people into bondage what caused people to go into bondage we're going to look at that now so we talk about freedom from bondage from sin and death freedom from limitation huh? limited resources glory to god hallelujah huh? yes freedom from you know, now when we think of freedom, saints of God, it means that one a person does not have. If, cause, cause what you're getting, what you're gaining is freedom. You're getting freedom. It means that you were restricted, you were limited in your action, your behavior, in your knowledge. It, you were just limited. But tonight I come to tell the world, I come to tell the nation. In the mighty name of Jesus, God is saying it's time for you to be free. This is why the Son came to set you free. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, freedom. Let's look at also John chapter 3. John chapter 3 verse 34 to 36. We're going to um, get this scripture down. John chapter 3. Verse 34 through 36. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, and it read thus. The man who has accept it has certified that God is truthful. What? A man who accept God's teaching has certified 
that God is true. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, my God. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was verse 33. Those who accept God's word certify that God is true. Now verse 34. For the one whom God has sent speak the word of God. The one whom God sent. Who did God send? Christ Jesus. Now I'm not discounting who God sent as the messenger like Moses and stuff like that. But it's speaking about Christ Jesus. The Bible is written about Christ Jesus. It said in Psalm 40 verse 7. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It's written of me. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. Hallelujah. So, so the one whom God sent. For the one whom God has sent, speak the word of God. For God gave the spirit without limit. God gave the spirit without limit. No restriction. When there's no limit, unlimited. Unlimited power, unlimited resources, unlimited knowledge, unlimited wisdom. Oh, glory to God. The God gave him the spirit without limit. And tonight that's what we are here to talk about. The spirit without limit. No limitation, no boundaries, glory to God, hallelujah, God, we, we shall go from ever increasing glory, from glory to glory, we shall go, as I started out with 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 17 and 18, glory to God, hallelujah. Now, now let's go to verse 35, and it said, now, the Father loved um, the Father loved the Son and has placed everything. Listen to those words. Everything. There was no old bar. No holding back. There was no holding back. The Father loved the Son and has placed everything in His hands. In His authority. In His care. Can you imagine God placed everything in your care? Occupy till I come. Glory to God. Now, let's look at this now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Everything in this hand. Verse 36. Whosoever believe in the Son has eternal life. Whosoever believe in the Son has eternal life. But whosoever reject the Son will not see life. Whosoever does not accept will not see freedom, will not see life because freedom, life come to the Spirit. Freedom come to the Spirit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Will not see life for God's wrath remain on that person. We need the Spirit of God. Yes, indeed. We need the Spirit of God. We need the freedom of God for those who accept Jesus Christ will now be able to free themselves through the knowledge, through the obedience of the word of God, putting it into practice. We are going someplace here. Now, saints of God, through the Holy Ghost, through the Holy Ghost, only through the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost believers have been given unlimited freedom and power. Only through the Holy Spirit. The, I, I, I want you to think, I want you to meditate, saints of God. Only through the Spirit of God you have unlimited freedom and power. Tell me, who else in this world can give you such freedom and power? Which man in this earth can give you such freedom and power. Wanna indulge your mind. I want you to think. Because many many believers I know feeling powerless. Not powerful, but powerless. While others are feeling very powerful, majority are feeling powerless. Why? What happened? Something will have to be wrong. We need to find out. Oh glory to God. So let us continue because we're gonna take your places. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The freedom my heart speak about is not the freedom that we receive from a judge or from mankind. I'm talking about the freedom that comes from the Holy Ghost. The great I am that lives in a believer. That's the freedom my heart speaks about, saints of God. Hallelujah. Then I'm going to give you three key 
I'm going to give you three key words. Mm -hmm. Three key definitions for the word bondage. I want you to listen carefully. I'm going to give you three, three key definitions for the word bondage. Okay. As I said, unfortunately, many believers are unable to recognize the unlimited freedom and power that the Holy Ghost gave unto them. It's not a put down. It's just a reality. They fail to recognize. They don't know. And as Sister Florence says, if you don't know your rights, you don't have none. If you don't know your rights, you just ain't have any. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, let us define the meaning of the word bondage. And this is where I'm going to give you the three. A, limit, limited freedom and movement. A person have limited freedom and movement. Bondage. We're looking at the word bondage, what it means. Limited, and I want you to think of the limited feelings or fear that plagues your mind. Fear you can't um, pay your bill and stuff like that. And, and let me just say, we thank God that the shutdown is over. And I, 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 I'm going to address that later on. Glory to God if I get the chance. Glory to God. B. Prevent someone from doing what they want to do. Bondage. We're looking at bondage, saints of God. Limited in freedom and in movement. That's bondage. Prevent someone from doing what they want to do. Number three, put in restriction. Put in restriction on people, freedom, and liberty. And then we need to find out now who put these restrictions, who limit people's freedom. Hallelujah, glory to God. Who preventing or what preventing people from freely move in the things of God, the liberty Christ gives you, the freedom and the power Christ gives you. Who, who limit you? Who stop you? What's stopping you? My friend, well, I want to tell you something. The, the answer may be alarming. Yes, frightening when you understand this. So here we have the three key um, definitions. I, I, you know, they, they could, it, it, there's a lot more, but I'm just giving you limited. Bondage means you're limited. Consider, consider um, somebody is in, and I know this is very sensitive, incarcerated, in prison. Watch this now. He don't have much freedom. He's always watching, somebody always watch over him. He has limited space, he has limited things that he has to do. Oh, glory to God. Are you with me, saints of God? I want you to get this, mm-hmm, right? He can drive here, he can go there, he can do what he does, because what? He's limited in his movement. He's limited in his action. Many Christians don't know I haven't recognized the freedom Christ brought them. They're not operating because they don't see it. They don't know it. Oh, glory to God. So they feel restricted. They feel powerless because they have not known the truth or they have not received the spirit of life. Whatever the purpose is. Watch this now. You may be thinking to yourself, who put limit and restriction on other people, freedom and liberty. You'll be surprised. Who put? Because oftentimes we think about an invisible devil. Yes, oftentimes we think about an invisible devil. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I want you to think. I'm not even going to finish that. Story. Yes, oftentimes we only think of an invisible devil. But what about the visible one? Because things are in two fold. Things are in twofold. Who is putting restriction on you? Who is hindering you? Who is stopping you? Who is preventing you? And I'll show you what the Bible said. I am going to give you com um, compelling evidence of who put restriction on people. I'm going to give you a Bible evidence. 
compelling evidence. Because as I said, the answer is alarming. Indeed, let me say to you now, I'm going to give you the answer. Are you ready for the saints of God? It was religious and political leaders who were curtailing the movement and the freedom of people. Here you go. I'm going to give you the truth. And we're going to prove this true Bible. I want you to hear who was curtailing, who put restriction, who put endurance, who put stumbling block in your way. And we're going to show you how they have done it too. Oh, glory to God. It was religious and political leaders who were curtailing the movement and the freedom of, God, of the people. Government officials, religious leaders who don't know God, who were putting restriction in people's way. Your Bible clearly say that. Glory to God. I'm going to show it to you just now. Now, now let's go to, um, let's look to Luke chapter 2, Luke chapter 11 and verse 52. I'm going to read from the King James Version. Luke chapter 11 verse 52. Let's go to the Word of God and see what the Word of God said. Because I want you to get this saints of God, the truth. Because remember what set you free. Only the truth make you free. Only the truth make you free. Luke chapter 11. Nothing else make you free. Because then if... If truth make you free, then common sense must tell your life put you in bondage. Mm, 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 mm. All right, okay. Lies put you in bondage. You know when I when I was doing this um, thing and I started to think about, I said, but my God, oftentimes you hear people use lies and tell lies. Yes, they would tell lies and said, um, you know, because they think within themselves, lies are gonna advance them. Well, let me tell you the truth. Life doesn't advance nobody. It may temporarily look like it's working. Can I just tell the truth? Oh, my God. Mm. Lies seem like it's going to advance you. But the truth about lies, what it does, it robs you, it kills you, and it destroys you. That's the truth about lies. Because if truth... If truth liberates your sins of God, come on, you got to get this. If the truth liberates you, then you need to know, then it's only common sense tell you is lies that put people in bondage. Mm. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's look at now. We said Luke chapter 2 verse, um, Luke chapter 11. I don't know why I keep on saying. Um, I, I know what Luke chapter 2 uh, verse 52. That Jesus grew in the wisdom and in the stature and he found favor with God and man. I think that's good to fit in there too. I don't want to keep on saying Luke chapter 2 verse 52. Cause I know that's what Luke chapter 2 verse 52 said. That he grew in wisdom. And in the statue of the word of God, the law of God, the command of God, and he found favor with God and with man. That's what Luke chapter 2 verse with that. I keep on quoting it for some reason I don't know, but um, God knows best. Let's look at Luke 11. We're looking at Luke 11 verse 52. Woe to you. Watch this carefully, saints of God. God as I said, you're going to need to listen to this message over and over again. It's a process until it registers inside of you. Glory to God. Until it makes sense. Until you digest it. Until you conceive it within yourself. You will see your freedom. And I can see your freedom days at hand right now. Oh, I can see your freedom days. Oh, glory to God. I can see your most glorious days upon earth is ready to reveal, is ready to manifest in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Because whom the Son set free is free indeed. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, who the Son set free is free indeed. Luke chapter eleven fifty two said, Woe unto you. Lawyers, listen to the word carefully, lawyers, mm -hmm. lawyers, 
defender of the law, makers of the law. Well, I want you to hear this. For he have taken away the key of knowledge. The lawmakers, and the Bible is going to tell you who were these lawmakers. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, look at this, saints of God. Woe to you, lawyers. For he have taken away the key of knowledge. He have entered not in yourself. Hmm? And them that were entering, he entered. You entered them. Now, uh, now, now, I want you to think of what is said here, saints of God. They have taken away the key to knowledge. When we speak about key, we're speaking about access to enter. Access, the privilege to enter. The advantage to enter. The right to enter. Because key show you you have a right to enter. The open. The opening up of things. Glory to God. And so what was happening here? The lawyers. And the policy makers. And the next verse. Let's look at verse 53 so you understand. Look at verse 53. And as he was. And as he said these things unto them. Them who, the scribe and the Pharisees, you see, they were the policy maker. They were the religious and political leaders of those days. And they are the one that ended God's people. Ended the people of God. Put stumbling block, curtail their freedom. Because, what you know, the people are subject to the government. As whether people would like it or not, you, you know, we are subject to um, <laughs> President Trump. We may not want to admit it, but guess what? He is the head of the country. Whether we want to believe it or accept it or not. We may not have voted for him, but come what may, it is what it is. That's just the truth. So what is now? Now, now I, I did say I will, if I get a chance, I was going to speak briefly on the shutdown. Now let's look at the shutdown saints of God. That just over after 35 days of shutdown of the government. Who shut down the government? Was it God? Was it God or was it man? Who shut down the government? Was it God or was it man? Did God instruct man to do that? Absolutely not. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We praise God. So, so, saints of God, as we understand it, it was the scribes and the Pharisees that we know they were the policy maker. They were the lawmaker. They were the religious and political leaders. I say, woe to them. The scribes and the Pharisees began to what? They used to urge him vehemently, watch it now, and to provoke him to speak of many things. Oh, glory to God. So, we understand. It was government official, religious leaders who were putting and will always put stumbling block and, uh, uh, and enter God's people from entering the kingdom of God. Hallelujah, saints of God. Hallelujah. We bless God. We bless God. Hallelujah. So, once we understand the saints of God, then you're going to know the truth. Now, see, why? The Bible would say to us now, now we're going to show you our true government. Now we must give respect to both sides of authority. Yes, we must give respect. Render unto Caesar what is due unto Caesar. I'm not teaching you this for you to, to eat people. No, no, no. I'm, I'm pointing your attention to the man Christ Jesus, to the teaching of God, to the wisdom of God, that you may be liberated internally. Because when you're liberated by the knowledge of God and you walk and obey the knowledge of God, let me tell you something, nothing can stop you. And I'm here to announce something very powerful today. Because now, now that we recognize certain things, saints of God, look at this now. Let me say this now. Let me say this in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, um, tonight, I want you to understand that what God's approve of, no man can disapprove of it. 
Now, I want you to write that down. Yes, I come to announce this in the mighty name of Jesus. What men, what God's approve of, no man can disapprove of it. You may choose not to obey it, but you can't disapprove of it. You may lie about it, but you can't disapprove of it. Oh God, I'm getting ready to tell you the truth, saints of God. Hallelujah. What God's approve of, no man can disapprove of it. Now we know that God has ordained you to be like Jesus Christ. Nobody can disapprove of it. Because it did, it did not require anybody input for God to make such a decision. And God ordained us to be like Jesus Christ. Now the problem is either you believe or you don't. And yes, this is where the stumbling block. Because remember what people put people in bondage. Deceptive teaching. Iranian teaching, lies, deception is what brings people into bondage. And I said, look again from Genesis, saints of God, look from Genesis. What seems that was going to advance Eve in the garden is what defeat her. I'm bringing your Bible truth. I'm bringing you evidence in the mighty name of Jesus tonight. What seems, what seems so good to Eve that was going to... Um, Advance her as a devil said, oh God, don't want you to know the truth because the day, the day you know the truth, you become wise as God. And it seems the plan, the plan seems good to Eve, but the truth, it did not advance her. Many of us believe that because we deceive people and we lie to people and people deceive you. Guess what? Let me tell you something, saints of God. Let me tell you something. Glory to God. No lies advance you in life. No deception advances life. And if you feel like you're getting away with something, wait until when it reveals the truth to you. When things reveal its reality to you, you will see things from a different perspective. Lies does not advance you. The only thing that's going to advance you and I in this world is the truth. And it's time for we to come to the truth. I will I come to say tonight, America, it's time for you to face the truth. America, it's time for you to face the truth. It's time for you to hold up to your shame and your guilt, America, for the deceptive teaching, oh God, and the stumbling block you have put in the people's them way. Look at the shutdown saints of God. Who put that stumbling block in people where? It was not God. It was, it, it was political men. And, and, and guess what? You know who put him in power to? The evangelical to. Can I tell you the truth? Can, let me look to the word of God. Those who back him. Uh, oh glory to God. Put him in, in, in power into office. Glory to God. He was religious and political leader. Sins of God. And I'm here to show you some facts. Oh glory to God. When I think about bondage. I think about apartheid. Mm hmm now there was a man from South Africa, oh glory to God, named Nelson Mandela. But he was a lawyer by profession, glory to God, hallelujah. And the South African government want Nelson Mandela to work on their team and restrict his people them. In other words, they have to get authorization to travel, the black the Africans them have to get authorization while the white them go free. Nobody put no limitation. Nobody put no boundary. Nobody put no, no, no restriction on them while they put restriction upon the other race. Are you with me, saints of God? And Nelson Mandela said, no, I will not agree with that. So he did not support that team. And he fight against it. And they put him in prison. Glory to God. Hallelujah. For 27 long years. To weaken his power. To limit him. But no matter how long they had put him in prison. Glory to God. When he came out of prison, he became the president of South Africa. Glory to God. Who God bless no man curse. I come to tell you glory to God. When God approve of his favor upon your life. When God approve of his blessing. When God approve of his spirit upon your life. When God approve of his wisdom in your life. Oh glory to God. No man can disapprove of that. When God reveal things to you. No devil in hell can disapprove of that. Somebody 
ought to give God the praise tonight. Somebody ought to give God the glory tonight. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. What God approve of, of our life. No devil can put no stumbling block in our way unless we do not believe. Bishop, do you have any more evidence upon that? Yes, I do. I have plenty of evidence. And I'm going to show you biblically. Remember, I believe in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. The whole and the New Testament. I believe. And I'm going to show you the truth according to the word of God. Hallelujah. So, yes. It was religious and political leaders who were curtailing the freedom and the movement of the people. They determine who succeed. They determine who fail. They determine which race go up and which race stay down. Well, let me tell you something. America may seem that he's very polished in his, in his scheme, in his wickedness. But I said it's time to let God people go. The message still remain as God said to Moses. Go tell Pharaoh. Yes, go tell Pharaoh. Let my people go. Glory to God. Well, saints of God, the, 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 the command has already gone forth. Who the Son set free is free indeed. You're not waiting for somebody to liberate you. You're moving under the power and the authority of the Holy Ghost tonight. Glory to God. And forevermore. If you believe. See, God don't put people in bondage. God liberate. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. So God don't put people in bondage. Then you need to know the truth from tonight. Glory to God. This is why I come to tell you, teach you this message. To point your attention to God. Look unto Jesus. Look unto Jesus. Burden are lifted at Calvary. Glory to God. You know, Sister Fletcher remind me of that song. Burden are lifted at Calvary. I'm free. Oh, he brought the bars of prison for me. Glory to God. He will brought the bars of prison for you tonight. Glory to God. If you believe. Saints of God, you need to share this message with the nation and let the nation hear the truth because we're going to show you Bible evidence. Oh, glory to God. When you take away the truth, which is the key to knowledge, the truth of knowledge, what do you left them with? What do you leave them with? Lies? Deception? Foolish? Emptiness? Is that what you do? Then you try to educate us for equal opportunity? Where do you get that from? As the legendary Bob Marley said, you can't educate us for no equal opportunity because it's not in your will. It's not in your intent. It's not in your plan. It's not in your game. It's not in your strategy. So you want us to be your fool. Glory to God. You see, you see, when you turn to Christ, he, 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 he forgot about the foolish child you used to be. You're no longer foolish. Now you are wise. Now you are wise. Walk circumspectly. Come, saints of God. Look. Look with me now. As I said, upon what you know, let me read something for you, saints of God. Go to Acts chapter 4. Let me show you the truth in Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Let me show you the truth. And you'd say, you don't say Bishop is preaching something contrary to the Bible. No, I'm teaching what's in the Bible in the mighty name of Jesus. Acts chapter 4. Let's pick it up from verse, verse 13. Let's look at from verse 13. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, we are going to pick it up from verse 13. Hallelujah, glory to God. Let me just fix this here. Okay, cool. Now, look at verse 13. Now, now I strongly suggest to all our listeners tonight, I strongly suggest to you, you need to read the entire chapter of Acts. Chapter, um, Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Please read Acts chapter 4. Because it started when Peter and John get the arm, um, the lame man to walk. When Peter and John get the, the lame man to walk and the news spreads that these men 
um, have this man walk in the name of Jesus Christ so that you open uh, only because I don't have time to go through the entire chapter so I'm going to pick it up from verse 13 watch this now chapter 4 verse 13 when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled ordinary men now I want to stop there they were unschooled they, we're talking about the Sanhedrin, the, 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 the religious leaders, the religious leaders and the political leaders because they were all in one. They, they all agree. They have their disagreement, but they were leaders who govern the hurt or the church or, the, or things like that. So I want you to understand that because I want to bring so you have clear freedom. So the Sanhedrin them. You're going to see what they do. They recognize, upon recognizing that these men were unschooled. Let's stay there for a second, what it means to be unschooled. It means that they were not trained in the ordinary way, in the traditional system. That's what it means. Yes, it means that they were not trained in the traditional system of men. Just like how oh, Jesus Christ was not trained. Hello, somebody. I, I, I want you to get this here, too. It means, when he said that Peter and John were unschooled or untutored, they, some people even go this far to say uneducated then. It means that they were not schooled in the traditional system known as the law of men. That's what it is. This is what this is. I want you to get what I'm saying here to your saints of God. They were not schooled. They were not trained in the traditional system known as the law of men. That's what this means. Okay. Glory to God. So now once, once you get a, a hold of that now, then you're going to understand where we are coming from. They were not schooled in the traditional system known as the law of men. See, when the Holy Spirit teaches you, when the Holy Spirit educate you, when the Holy Spirit guide you, when the Holy Spirit bless you, oh God, for as many as receive him, to them he gave power. Are you going to see when you are schooled by the Holy Ghost? Uh, oh God, if you have a relationship uh, with God through Christ Jesus Christ, then it makes a difference from how you have been taught the traditional way uh, through the system of men. It, it was the system of men that put people in bondage. Yes, the religious and the, the, the political system of men uh, put people in bondage. Yeah, yeah, you see, I'm not afraid to teach the true saints of God. Because when I put the truth out there, it's what you do with it. It's up to you. Glory to God. But I'm showing to you, this is what the word of God is showing you tonight. So, now, these religious people saw, recognized... <laughs> upon recognizing the truth that Peter and John were unschooled or untrained by the traditional system known as the law of men. Look what is now. Watch this now. So look what they said. Now I want you to see now what's going on now so you understand. They were unschooled in, as ordinary men. They were astonished. And they took note, and they took note that these men had been with Jesus Christ. Lord have mercy. What? These men are disciples of Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. They took note. They observed saints of God. Hallelujah. Yes, they observed. These people observed that these men uh -huh, were disciples of Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Look at verse 14. Verse 14 said, no. But since they could see the man who had been ill. So now they see that they, they, they saw the evidence that this man has been ill. Uh -huh. Standing there with them. There was nothing they could say. So they ordered them to uh, withdraw from the, uh, from the Sanhedrin. Watch this now. Then confer together. Uh -huh. They confer together. What are we going to do with these men? What are we going to do with these men? Question asked. So they're plotting. They're plotting. Who is plotting? The authority. Those who are in authority. Glory to God. They're plotting. What are we going to do with these men? Now what is it? So see, it's important that you read the sins of God. Uh -huh. What are we going to do with these men? Question asked. 
they ask everybody living in Jerusalem. No, they have done an outstanding miracle. Yes, they have done an outstanding miracle. And we cannot deny it. We can't deny the miracle, but we got to do something against it. The evidence is there that these men are this man ill. And they said, the outstanding evidence is there to prove it. Verse 17. Verse 17. But to stop this, watch this now. But to stop this thing from spreading any further. Did you see what happened now? To stop this thing from spreading any further. Do you see what curtail mean? Uh, we have to cut down this freedom. We have to shut down this freedom. We have to shut down this movement. This is religious and political men idea. Trying to stop the move of God. You see, sins of God, when you're not supporting, when you're not working, when you're not putting the things of God into practice, into action, then what are you doing? You're trying to stop. But let me tell you something. Who oh God bless, no man curse. Now we can, uh, sins of God, the, the old Bible can be opened upon this now. Look at Joseph and his brother them. They were trying to prevent the vision that God put in Joseph's heart from coming forth. Uh, oh, come on, hold on to your vision. Hold on. Children of God, hold on to God and change it. Hold on to the vision of God. Because what God put inside of you, no man can stop it. When God educate you, when God lead you, when God guide you, when God bless you, no man can disapprove of it. And I'm telling you, saints of God, as anointing as this word of God is tonight, you need to meditate. You need to listen to it. You need to share it with your generation to generation to come. Because we're telling you, you're not seeing any bondage. We come to get you out. We come to get you out. So now, so they said now, verse 17, but to stop this thing from spreading, what thing? The works of God. Religious people and political, to stop the work of God. But let me tell you, you can't fight again. Why does the Eden rage? Psalms 2. Huh? And why, the, why do they plot vain things? Trying to stop the things of God. But tonight I come to pray. That America recognize what is happening here. Because the eyes and the understanding of God. People are being opening up. Oh glory to God. The chicken is coming to rules. They are coming to understanding. They are coming to the reality. Of the truth of God word. And I come to announce to people. Tonight all over the world. It's time for you to wake up. And turn to God. Look to God because burden are lifted. Chains are falling off. Oh, glory to God. Mental, physical, emotionally, it is God. It is broken. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. Oh, God. It destroyed the fetter, the chain. No more chain in our mind. No more limitation. Because the Holy Spirit come to remove the limitation. Let me finish. See if I can finish read this sins of God. Let me see. They say, but to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people, we must warn these men to speak no longer to any to anyone in this name. Do you see that? I want you to get because we read and we skip over these things. Religious and political leader. Oh no, we can't afford to let this spread. We don't want the truth to spread. We're going to hinder them. We're going to take away the key to the knowledge of truth. And God. But these young men, Peter and John, and the apostle them, as much as um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel and those guys, Jeremiah, they were not afraid to put their life on the line for the gospel truth to be advanced. It's time for the believers to come and let us advance the the knowledge of the kingdom of God. Let us come into the unity of the knowledge of the word of God. It's time for your freedom. Arise, my people. Wake up and live. It was religious and government official that ended the people trying to stop the gospel from going forth. Stopping the freedom, the healing and the liberation of God, people from going forth. It's in your Bible. Oh, glory to God. So watch this. So they said, no, we can't make it spread any further. And we cannot afford for them to teach in this name any further. Watch this now. So verse 18 said, verse 18 said, Then they call them in again and command them not to speak or teach 
at all in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you see that? They commanding Peter and John, don't teach in the name of Jesus Christ. Because, hey, we see the evidence what? When they believe, the man believed and he got ill and said, guess what? We cannot afford to let this happen. We don't want this to happen. So they was trying to end up. They were trying to curtail the move of God. But I want to tell you, it doesn't matter who be against you tonight. Huh? But if God be for you, then who can be against you? Glory to God. Open up your eyes, my brother. Open up your mind and look into the thing. Because, you see, when you think is your neighbor next door, is your enemy, you need to think again, who is really your enemy? Who is? And I'm not trying to tell you to become pessimistic because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality. If you know what the word principality means, it means a doctrine. A body of a doctrine of knowledge. That's what you're overcoming. The lies, the deception. And when it seems like lies, you see, many of us, we are advancing in lies and think we are advancing. You're not going nowhere. You soon find out that you were standing on emptiness. You need to stand upon the word of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So watch this then. Therefore, the religious. The religious and political leaders decided to curtail the movement and the freedom of the Holy Spirit. Do you see that? It's what you just read here. Yes, religious leader and political leaders uh -huh, were trying their best. And so far, because many of us don't know these truths, it ends you, it stops you. Tonight I want to ask you a question, whose side are you on? Do you believe the teaching of God's word tonight? Watch it now. It is the religious and political teaching system of men that cause people to be uh, in bondage. Let me say it again in closing because I'm not going to say any more until I'm going to do part two of this message. Maybe tomorrow or Sunday morning whenever God allowed me to do part two of this message to continue we're going to pick it up from here we're going to pick it up from here and go deeper into the word of God so you understand how to how God want to lead you and guide you his government his government his government must advance there's no end to the increase of God's government in our life so it was the religious and political teaching system known as the law of men that cause people to be in bondage. They try they try to drive fear in those people in the apostles them heart. Some of them were gruesomely murdered, butchered. Do you know your history is in your Bible? They were butchered, they were martyred for the truth, trying to stop the move of God. But hearts are uniting upon the word of God, saints of God. Um, tonight, I pray that you have been blessed because we don't want the message to be too long. So I'm going to have to end it right here tonight. But we are going to continue and I pray that it provoke you to go back and read and find the truth. Because when you know who the culprit is. When you know what the true enemy is, anything that fight against the Antichrist, that fight against the word of God, don't be fooled. The Bible said it's not everyone that say, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of God. Saints of God, know. Know the truth for yourself. This is why we encourage you to log on to www.lorradio.com. We ask you to share the information with people what is being taught here. If you are in agreement, you notice I didn't say anything, I didn't tell any lie, I show you from the Bible. I have showed you evidence, yes, compelling evidence of what I teach according to the word. And look who murdered the apostles then. And if you notice, America is no different. When you go back, if you go search your history, if you think they didn't have nothing to do with the death of Martin Luther King, he knew. 
You understand? Who was trying to stop um, Nelson Mandela? It was government. It, the history is there. Whether you, so you can see it naturally and spiritually. Open up your eyes, saints of God. It's time for God people to unite. It's time for we to unite upon the truth. So for those who are on Facebook, we want to say thank you for listening. I pray that this message challenge you and your family as you meditate over it over the weekend. Glory to God. And I pray. God Almighty that you share it with other people. So we're going to say good night and we're going to stop this video right now from Facebook. We want to thank you for this platform in Jesus name. We pray. Glory to God. God be with you. Shalom. May the peace of God that pass it all understanding rest and abide with you now and forevermore. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Amen.